Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be going over this shot here. Um, I was going to say inspired by Doctor Who, but it's just straight up from Doctor Who. Uh, so yeah, I'll play the shot for you now. Hello, this is Editing Jordan. Uh, before we get into the No Tree Breakdown, I did just want to say that we have a Discord server now. So I will be leaving the link to that in the description. You can come, you can make some AI artwork. We have the Mid Journey button there. We have an AI dungeon crawler thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, and there's just spots for you to put in your work, get feedback on like your latest pass or something, and just to chat and have a good time so if that interests you at all feel free to go into the description click the link and uh join the server we'd love to have you there and we're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff with uh competitions and uh weekly vfx prompts and stuff like that just to keep your inspiration going so uh yeah if, you, if that interests you join it see what happens uh we'd love to have you and i hope to see you there anyway back to the video so, you might not know this about me, but uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Doctor Who, and so is my girlfriend, so she was super excited to get uh, into this shot. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. Uh, I will start with the footage. So as you can see, the footage is kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> it's very low budget, it's just a pop-up blue screen with lots and lots of wrinkles on it. It's a pretty crappy blue screen, I need to get a new one. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just in my living room, honestly. Uh, there you go, there's my TV, <laughs> there's some posters on the wall, there you go. Uh, but yeah, so let's move on. I have alpha generator nodes, that was actually because I made a mistake, this didn't have an alpha, I didn't check auto alpha, I've checked it now, so they're kind of not needed, but you know, whatever. Uh, disregard those. Uh, what I've got next is an edge key. Uh, as you can see, let's go into the alpha, it's getting all the nice fall off, uh, it's keeping all this frizz, uh, all that nice hair detail, but it's doing absolutely nothing for her core. Jesus Christ, that's, <laughs> that's a bit scary, oh my god. Uh, but yeah, so, that, I've done that, uh, purely just to get the edges, um, so you should be keying, you should definitely be doing edge key and then a core key. Uh, speaking of a core key... This is what I got here, as you can see. Uh, very little detail around the edges. It's eroded a little bit, uh, but it's fully solid inside. And yeah, that's just a core key. I have a pre-mount here. Uh, not sure why. I think it did solve an issue though. So I'm not gonna get rid of that. Uh, and then we merge it over. Now I have actually uh, chucked a color correct node on the edge key because beforehand it was a little bit oversaturated. Uh, if we look here, yeah, just fixed it. Way too red, way too orange. To be honest, I've probably taken it a little bit too far, but uh, that's kind of where there's a light and stuff, so it makes a little bit more sense. But yeah, so that, I got that looking better. Uh, and then uh, what these bits are, they are little roto shapes. So what these are doing is they are fixing an issue so if you look here, it's actually cutting out some stuff. So yeah, because this was reflecting a lot of blue and <laughs> um, a little bit of a mess up on my half, she was wearing like a blue shirt, which is a bit dumb. Uh, so yeah, this was just reflecting all, all, all the blue, like just everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just manually despilled it, which kept the green, made this a little bit more gray. Uh, and then I color corrected it just to match the shot a bit better. Um, as you can see, it fits fairly well. I'm pretty happy with how I got, like, you know, if you really look, you can tell, but I'm happy with how it looks, and it's super quick anyway, it's not there for long. That is all that's doing, it's just fixing a weird keying issue, and same thing with this keying issue, but with the hair at the very start, uh, connected to the collar thing. Won't go into that, um, but yeah. And then this here is just simply just getting rid of all this stuff, as you can see. You know, we can't have my lounge room be in the TARDIS, so, uh, yeah, we just got rid of that. Now, I added this little color correct node purely just to get some of our skin tones back. As you can see, it just takes away, like, a slight amount of orange and yellow. It was just a little bit too much. 
Uh, so, yeah, that was, it was very necessary. She looked a little bit too washed out in orange. Then we have the artificial camera move. Now there's a lot that goes into artificial camera moves. There's like lots of parallax and stuff you need to take into account. This isn't a super complicated one. I've just scaled up the foreground and the background elements at different rates to kind of mimic that parallax. And then um, I've added a little bit more defocus. Like they've gone, the background elements have gone more out of focus as you get closer to the subject. It's super simple. It's not the most complex one. Uh, but if we have a look here, um, yeah, it's got keyframes on the scale and the translate. Uh, basically, it just needed to go down a little bit because the head was getting cut off. Uh, that's why they're linked. I wanted them to stick together. So, yeah, they move down at the same point. And then we have an undistort, uh, which is just getting rid of that lens distortion because I shot on a 25mm lens. There was quite a bit of lens distortion. And then we are merging over the background. Now let's quickly go over the background uh, because there is a lot going on. Uh, here is what it looked like in the end. I'm, you know, very happy with it. it looks pretty cool. Uh, here is the photo I used. <laughs> uh, just the worst possible photo. Like it's just of a convention or something, but I couldn't get one that was the right angle like from the show. I wanted to get a screenshot from the show maybe something from like day of the doctor where it's a little bit more modern and you see it again and they've like lit it a little bit better because all the stuff from like 2005 and shit just looks a bit crap but um, yeah because i wanted like moody lighting i wanted it to be dark not this dark this is kind of crazy i think this is just a color space issue but yeah there's a bit much but yeah so anyway i'm super happy with how it turned out so i'm definitely going to talk about it uh let's get into it so first things first i just color corrected it literally just make it look like the show that that was my entire goal i just wanted to add more yellow uh this obviously was blue uh, but adding that yellow made it green and i prefer the green version i didn't want the blue version that's why i lit her with a green light uh then we got to reformat obviously just to keep everything neat uh mirrored it just to this mirror node is really just getting the composition started where I want it to be. Uh, I really liked this detail. Uh, as you can see, it's on this side and this is on uh, the wrong side. Uh, with the footage, what I did was I lit her with it here because that is where I wanted the console to be. Um, I wanted it to be kind of like she was looking at the door of the TARDIS. Like, yeah, th th there was a, a whole scene <laughs> originally planned for this. I'm not going to get into it. I might still make it. Who knows? But um, yeah, so uh, that's what that's doing. It's just mirroring it to kind of get everything in the right spot. And then a transform just to get the background and perspective looking right. Um, yeah, because focal length and stuff are kind of tricky. I don't know what this was shot at, so I, I had to eyeball it. It was kind of hard, but I, I think I've got it looking good. Now we branch off into a few different things. So the first branch here is simply just mirroring this to fill out the background and I'll explain why in a second. So basically for this, all I did was I cut this out, did this, la da da, and did that. It's pretty simple. It's really nothing crazy and it's obviously super obvious that it's been repeated. The colors don't even match, but yeah, again, I'll explain why in a second. So the second thing we have going on is I wanted to fill out some detail in the black areas. So I got this, it's just a random switchboard console thing, just to, it's so random, like I don't even know what it does. Uh, but yeah, it's just to kind of uh, add some detail to the darkness, you know, so it's not pitch black. And also all these little points look really good when they're defocused. So that was another bonus for that. I uh, reformatted it. Uh, transformed it to it like where I wanted it to be just getting it up a little bit so it showed a bit more in the defocus rotated it out now this roto shape uh, super janky what it's doing is it's going over this section here because that was like just black <laughs> uh, this is one of those like weird pillar things that like kind of look like tentacles I don't really know what they are in the TARDIS but yeah, they're not supposed to have lights on it, but you can't really tell that it is that in the final shot. It just looks black. So I thought, you know what, I'll add some detail. Yeah, next I added this smoke element, which 
it adds so much. It adds so much to the scene. Oh my god, I'm so glad I added it. So this is all it is. Um, it's a moving smoke element, and I've mirrored it just because it like kind of puffs out from here, and I wanted it to be like uh, a steam vent. Um, if you remember, if you know what those look like, they're like they just go. Pfft where like steam comes up and stuff uh, i'm pretty sure it happens in the show I've, I've seen it somewhere in a tardis but yeah i wanted it to look like that uh and then color corrected it just to get it matching because if we didn't let's have a look looks very out of place and very fake so yeah color corrected it looking good matching well it just adds so much to the scene i was super happy with it and obviously because it's moving it makes it feel less like a picture uh, and just, yeah, makes it look more like they're in an actual environment. Next we have Defocus. I use the Magic Defocus from the Rebel Way Gizmo Pack. It's fantastic. Um, you do have to take the Advanced Compositing course to get it, unfortunately, but uh, it, it's such a good Gizmo Pack. I really love it. I use a lot of the stuff. I use actually another one later on, which I will show you. Uh, actually, I use another one in the key that I showed you just before. Uh, IPK Color Stack. That's theirs as well. Uh, that's super good. <laughs> it gets a really good clean plate. Um, so yeah, uh, you do have to do the course, but I would recommend doing the course anyway. I have this defocus. Uh, it does have keyframes. So if we look at the start, it is less defocused. Um, just because I wanted to kind of sell this camera move. As I mentioned, as we get closer to the subject, uh, the background gets more out of focus and I did shoot at 1.8 so it was pretty drastic to be quite honest this should be more out of focus but I like the way it looks because I really like seeing that steam detail uh, especially in the final shot so yeah now our last branch for this section uh, starts back at the start uh, what is happening here is we are getting the console unit because as you can tell it is missing <laughs> i've kind of just cut it out uh but yeah so that was because i grabbed it here transformed it i wanted it to be closer to the character i wanted it to feel like they were standing at the console unit and like kind of like looking around the tardis so uh yeah that's why i did that and it, it seems a little big but um i did actually get a size reference for david tennant uh, standing next to the console unit and it's a pretty accurate size it's just it's just such a huge thing got a bit of color correction uh, roto the edge out a little bit because if we look here yeah like it looks black and stuff but it's the alpha is still there so when I was merging it over I will actually show you real quick so if we get rid of this roto it was doing this so yeah I just got this the edge detail is a bit funky here, but again, it's out of focus. You can't see it, and that's definitely not where the focus of the shot is, so I thought I could get away with it. Um, and then, yeah, more more defocus uh, again. This had to be contrasted pretty high, and it scaled up a lot, so it looks pretty shit, especially when you go full screen. Uh, it looks pretty bad, but defocus helps, <laughs> uh, thankfully. So, yeah. And then, yeah, obviously that is just merged over... Then we have the artificial camera move, like uh, before. I did desaturate it a little bit. It was just a little bit too much, uh, as you can see here. It's not a huge amount, uh, but, you know, it's enough. And then we have grain. Uh, usually you should be adding grain right at the end, like as part of the lens effect stage. But what happened was I did the whole key and realized I forgot to denoise the original image. So it still had the grain on it. Uh, and I'd spent so much time on the key, like so much time, I didn't want to go back and add a denoise just in case it messed it up. That was definitely a mistake. It worked out in the end. I managed to get it matching pretty well. And luckily the lens effects uh, aren't like super in your face so you know you can kind of get away with the grain not being a part of them but yeah the way i've done this is obviously done the grain and as i'm sure a lot of you know grain doesn't show in the highlights because grain comes from or i should say noise comes from lack of light information and highlights like this are when there's too much light information that's why they clip so there shouldn't be any noise in there so what i've done is take this uh, if we look at the alpha, 
I have inverted it so all the bright parts are being subtracted from the alpha. Uh, it gets this nice fall off. Uh, so all the pure white parts uh, are the darkest parts, if you see here. And then obviously the pure black parts. Yeah, you can see. So basically, done that. Key mixed it over using this as a mask. Uh, and what that does is that only puts the grain in the black parts. You can see it here and it is not here. So yeah, it's good. It also makes the grain more subtle because this was a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, you do this. It's just a little bit more subtle because uh, it's not going over absolutely everything. So that is the final product. Uh, super, super happy with it. And then obviously we merge it over. Now it looks a little bit funky. Like it looks all right, but you know, there's no edge detail going on here or here, so, or here. So that's what we're doing now. I transformed it a little bit, just scaled it up slightly uh, because if we look here, it just comes down to the tiniest amount. Uh, so yeah, I just, so tiny, got rid of that. Uh, it's a little bit more drastic there. It looked super tiny there, but yeah. Uh, it, it ended up being noticeable, so I thought, oh, i got to fix it. So, yeah, just scaled that up to fix that issue. Then we are re-distorting the image. Um, it's the exact same as this one, but re-distorting it here. And then, obviously, to avoid this stuff going on, we're just scaling it up a little bit. Finally, we are onto proper lens effects. Uh, lens distortion is a proper lens effect, but... The reason it comes beforehand is because I had to understore it before, so it's kind of just, it's still just a matching thing. But yeah, now we're onto the proper lens effects. We have the rim blur. Don't know what it's actually called. I called it the ring blur. Sounds a little bit dirty. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically what that is doing is adding this little blur that happens. Uh, if we have a look. Um, that happens around anamorphic lenses. I'm not entirely sure if it happens in... Um, uh, spherical lenses as well, but I know what happens in anamorphic lenses, and that's kind of the look I was going for. Uh, but yeah, so that just blurs it around the edges slightly, and I used eye blur instead of a regular blur, because if we plug this in, put it simply, you just don't get this weird glowy effect. See how you can still see, like in, in this one, you can still see the hard edge. Uh, this one you can't, because it's blurring it gradually. Uh, this is the alpha. It takes a while to go away. It's very feathered. It's basically just to stop that weird glowing effect. And then we get onto the bloom, which I think really ties the image together. So the first set of bloom I wanted to do was this. Uh, I wanted to kind of add a glow, uh, make it feel a little bit more saturated, make it match uh, the light on the actor a little bit more. Uh, so I've, I've keyed it, pre molt got this. This is just the bright areas. This is just so, like, it wasn't blurring darkness. Um, it's just a luma key. It's simple. If we have a look here, it's just a luma key. Um, and then, yeah, pre molt it to make a new alpha. And then we're doing the bloom, which I haven't really gone over before. Uh, I, think I, I think I went over it a little bit in... Um, in my Stranger Things video, I think. But basically what is happening is it's blurring. And the rule for bloom is it blurs the light um, double each time, but each time you do it, it's a quarter as visible until you get to zero. So you only do it four times. Uh, so I start off with 80, and obviously 160, 320, 640. Uh, barely visible. But then you plus them all together and you get a really nice fall off. Uh, for example, if you just did this, it looks a little bit weird, but then you add the layers and you have a nice fall off. Um, this, it's going down in quarters. Like I said, each time you do it, it's a quarter, uh, it's a quarter less visible. I've also done it in a different order. So basically the larger ones, because they are less visible, the more it goes out, they're on top. So obviously Nuke works in A over B. So A over B, A over B, A over B. Yeah, you get it. So that is 0.75, that one is 0.5, and that one is 0.25 mix. So yeah, that's how you end up with this. Looks great, super happy with it. 
And then what I did was added some color correct just to really bring that green out because I wanted this to be the green version. I didn't want it to be like a weird desaturated green. Uh, and it also matched her a lot more. Um, it's a bit hard to show it probably, but if we look here and then look here, you know, obviously that's lighter because that's a light source, but you know, it's, it's, it's a very similar shade. Uh, if we have a look without it, it doesn't really match. <laughs> yeah. The next one is this. Uh, this is the exact same mask as this one. Just reused it, but inverted it, as you can see. Uh, and yeah, it's just, I, I'm getting a key on the bright lights here. There you go. Got the bright lights going on. Uh, this is to add actual bloom again. Uh, we get this. Realistically, it should be blooming a lot more, if that makes sense. Like, it should be wider and have more fall off but uh, the original image already had bloom in it because it was actually taken of a real light so i didn't want to overdo that so i really just wanted to get the uh eating into the edges because if we have a look here it's not eating into the edges at all obviously because it's just placed on top uh, but then this one it is it looks a little bit drastic but what i did was add this color so you really this is the only bit that really looks like bright bright light uh, because when we merge it over, it just adds that color back. Like if we get rid of that uh, color correct, then it starts to look a little bit too bright. Looks a little bit artificial. So yeah, it also just makes them look less overexposed because like I said, they were already overexposed. Like all this stuff here, that's just not even mine. That's just part of the photo. So yeah, it's a little bit annoying. Uh, that's just how it worked out. Had to deal with it. And then we have this flare. It's super subtle, it's so tiny. You can barely freaking see it. Uh, it's it's literally just to kind of add a little bit more of an anamorphic feel to the bloom that's already there. Like I said, this was already overexposed to all hell, but to make it match a little bit better, I thought adding this flare helped. If we have a look at it, adds a lot of volume to this area, and obviously the overlap with her face kind of merges it together a little bit better it looks very drastic when you turn it on and off like this uh but it's animated to so at the start let's have a look at the start she isn't uh out of she's like she's in front of the light uh and then obviously she's she moves her head and then that's when the flare comes in and then later on uh, when she's in front of it again the flare goes away so it's animated correctly uh, it just looks a little bit drastic because of the section i'm using and then finally we have this which is just three shuffle nodes getting all the different channels uh because we're doing some chromatic aberration my favorite thing <laughs> honestly it, it really is it's kind of sad uh but yeah so we have this lens distortion literally just doing this it's so tiny, you can barely see it, but it's pretty accurate because I didn't want to do, I didn't want to overdo it on the chromatic aberration because this lens is pretty clean. It doesn't have any naturally, um, at least not that I can notice. So even if it does, it's super subtle. And I wanted to keep that. Uh, so if we have a look, you can notice it, obviously when you zoom in more. It's, it's it's still very subtle though. You're not, it's not doing a huge amount. You can see a little bit pop up here. Yeah, but I think it adds a lot to it. I love chromatic aberration. I love the way it looks. Uh, it's very easy to do. Uh, so yeah, there you go, chromatic aberration. And that is it. Uh, I did one last reformat just to make sure everything's neat and tidy and cropped and yeah, just to make sure everything's looking good because as you can see, at some point along the way, our bounding box went crazy. So, uh, yeah, just reformatted that to make sure it's all good. And then put a right node down to export it. Very simple. I like the way it turned out. I'm super happy with this shot. Um, I think it looks good. I think it looks pretty realistic. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this is kind of a new style of video that I like doing a little bit more than... Uh, general tutorials is just making something cool telling you how I did it and hopefully you guys can learn that way that's how I prefer to learn I'm sorry if it's not the way you prefer to learn but it's the way I prefer to learn so I'm hoping uh, I can help you guys that way again I am super happy with this shot I think it turned out really really good uh, yeah I, I'm very happy with it uh, and I hope you guys are happy with it too 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I've left the link to the new Instagram and Discord in the description, so go check those out. Uh, I'd love to have you there. And yeah, I hope to see you guys next time.